Number 24, name the following compounds. And then we have A through F. Okay, so we did a very similar question like this in number 23. So if you want more practice after this, you could go back. Um, so yeah, so this one, we're just going to be going over all the rules for these questions in which to name the following compounds. So let's get started. So for A, we have NAF. Now, the first thing that you have to pay attention to if you need to know how to uh, write a compound is you always have to start from the tippy top. You got to find out if it's an ionic compound or if it's covalent because ionic naming is very different from covalent naming. So ionic uh, ionic compounds, remember, are between the metal and a nonmetal. Covalent compounds are all nonmetals. So if you see at least one metal, it's automatically going to be covalent. So let's analyze these elements. Sodium, Na, is right here. Oh, it's automatically a metal, so it's going to be part of the ionic naming. Now, ionic naming is then spread into two other categories. Is your metal either a main group metal or is it a transition? Because depending on if your metal is a main group metal or a transition, it will have two different ways of naming the compound. Now remember where your main groups are. Your main groups are 1 and 2, so I'm just going to put Mg for main group, and then 13 all the way to 18. Those are your main groups. Your transition are 3 all the way to 12 transitions. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule because, I mean, it's chemistry, so there's always going to be exceptions. But let's just pretend that there is none right now. If we do spot out an exception, I will tell you right then and there, all right? So, sodium is over here. It's part of the main group. So I just have to follow the way that main group ionic compounds are named. And how they're named is that the metal name always stays exactly the same. And the non-metal will always get the IDE ending. I don't care how many metals I have. I don't care how many non-metals I have. All I have to do is just state the metal name and the non-metal IDE. So for Na, it's sodium. That name stays exactly the same. And then F is fluorine. But fluorine, the IDE, comes into play. So it won't be fluorine. It would be fluoride. So if I can just erase this and instead put fluoride, that would be the answer. And it's two words, the metal and the nonmetal. there's a space in between there. So NaF is just sodium fluoride. Easy as that. A is done. B, RB2O. Okay, well, ionic or covalent, you gotta start at the top. So RB, rubidium, is right here. Oh, that's a metal. So automatically, this is going to be ionic compound. The next thing you always say to yourself is, is that metal a main group metal or is it a transition? Well, it's in group one, so it's got to be a main group. So we're getting closer. So it's basically the same thing as we did before. The metal name stays exactly the same. So RB, it doesn't matter that I have two of them. I don't care. Whatever the metal name is, that's what it's going to be. So this would be rubidium. And then the non-metal would always get the IDE ending. Now, O is oxygen. Now, sometimes they're going to be a little bit weird, right? I'm not going to just take out the E-N and add IDE. It has to sound nice. So oxygen oxide, and that's how you turn it into the IDE ending. So you would actually just get rid of everything except for OX and just put oxide. And that's the answer to the second one, rubidium oxide, and that answers B. C, BCl3, so same thing. Where is boron? Boron is here, uh-oh, boron's a metalloid. So boron, being a metalloid, can either have metal or non-metal properties. Which one is it gonna be? Just know that boron, B, follows non-metal rules for naming at least all right so in this case it's going to act covalently so we're going to name bcl3 
as if it were a covalent compound. Now, I put over here on the right-hand side how to name covalent acids. Acids have to do with hydrogen, and you can always spot out an acid if it has an H in the front. But since BCl3 doesn't have any Hs, we don't care about that right now. The other way that I like to talk about covalent compounds is I always say that it's the call it as you see it method. Whatever they state here, that's basically how you're going to name the compound. And in this case, you do have to take into consideration how many borons you have and how many chlorines you have. That's when you use the prefixes. So these prefixes, one all the way through 10, right? These guys and these guys, you have to memorize them. Probably your teacher or professor won't let you, you know, have a cheat sheet for this, but maybe they do. I don't know. Um, but I would just memorize it. It will be good, and it, it does change a little bit when you get into organic, but for right now, for all of covalent compounds for Gen Chem, it will be this standard system. Now, the only trick here is the one for mono. I'm going to put this over here, that you only have to say the word mono for the second um, nonmetal. If the first metal that you see has only one, you don't have to say the word mono. You could just say the uh, non-metal name. So in this case, how many borons do you have? You have one boron. And since it's the first element, you can just say boron. You don't have to say monoboron. You only use the word mono if the second non-metal that you state has one. So that's like the little trick there. Now, how many chlorines do you have? You have three chlorines. So three is tri, so this would be boron tri chlorine. However, the IDE ending also works for covalent compounds as well. So the INE would get rid of, and you would turn it into IDE. So this wouldn't be boron trichlorine, it would be boron trichloride, and that's the answer for C. So that was our first covalent one, boron trichloride. Call it as you see it, just how many you have, you just have to put that as the prefix. Uh, no crisscrossing here, that's that. All right, so now let's erase these, and then we will get to their last three. So I'm just going to quickly erase this. Beep, beep. All right. D. H2SE. Okie dokie. Let's see. Hydrogen's always here. So that's a nonmetal. And selenium is over here. That's also a nonmetal. So once again, we're in the covalent land. This is a pure covalent compound, right? Two, two nonmetals. However, I see that I have a H in the front. This signifies that it's an acid. So I'm going to be talking about my acids because I see that H. Now, the question is, is it binary or is it an oxoacid? Binary means that you only have two elements, two different elements. Oxoacids, you would have three or even more. But for binary, bi means two. Here's the one element, hydrogen, and the other element is selenium. So since you have two different elements, you only have hydrogen and you have selenium, this would be classified as a binary acid. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Binary acids actually have two different ways of naming, depending on what state they're in. They didn't tell me here, so I might as well give you both of them. Now, H2SE could be in gas form, and it could be in aqueous form, meaning that it dissolves in water, aqua, aqueous. And because of these different states, they would have different names. So we just have to go over those real quick. If it's in the gaseous state, if there's a binary acid that you spot out that's in a gaseous state, it will always be hydrogen um, blank IDE, so blank I'd, and then insert your nonmetal here. So in this case, it's H2SE, so it would be hydrogen selenide. It's selenium, 
you drop the ending and you add the IDE. So this would be the answer if it was H2SE in a gas form. Now let's go over the rules for what it would be named if it was in the aqueous form. If you have a binary acid that's in the aqueous form, it's hydro blank ic acid. So that's the difference there. Gas form, you have the whole word hydrogen, but in the aqueous form, you drop it down to just hydro. And then in this case, you would insert your other nonmetal, in this case, selenium. So here it would be hydro. Now you got to cut it off. You got to cut it off so that it sounds kind of nice, right? So this would be hydro selen. It would be selenium. So selenic acid. And that would be the name if it was in aqueous form. So this one technically has two names. I don't know whether it's gas or aqueous, so I'm just going to put both of them. So this would either be hydrogen selenide, or it would be hydro selenic acid. And then D is done. This one's also done. So hopefully those uh, rules will stick with you. That one's a little bit kind of tricky because it just depends. Moving on, let's get rid of this now. And let me just get rid of this a little bit quick. Okay. Now, for E, we got P4O6. So we have phosphorus and we have oxygen. Phosphorus is over here. It's a nonmetal. Oxygen's up top here. That's also a nonmetal. Two nonmetals. This is definitely covalent. Is this a acid, however? Do we see a hydrogen, especially in the front? Absolutely not. There's no hydrogens here, right? It's just phosphorus and just oxygen. So this is the call it as you see it method, and you got to use your prefixes. So how many phosphorus are there? Oh, there's four phosphorus. And remember, the first um, nonmetal keeps its name. Only the last one gets the IDE ending. So four is tetra. So this would be tetra phosphorus. And now there's six oxygen. So six is hexa. So hex. And now, if you guys have taken a foreign language, especially Italian and probably Spanish, um, when you have two vowels next to each other, what happens to the one vowel? It cancels. So it wouldn't be hexa, it would just be hex oxygen, but then it has to turn to the IDE ending. So oxide is always the IDE form of oxygen. So that's it. Tetraphosphorus hex oxide. Call it as you see it. There was four phosphorus, so tetraphosphorus. And then there was six oxygens, so hex oxide. And it's two words. There's a space right here. And then last but not least, we have F, I, C, L, 3. Iodine is over here, so that's a nonmetal. Chlorine's over here, so we have iodine, we have chlorine. They're both nonmetal, so this is covalent. I don't see any hydrogens, so that's not an acid. So this is the call it as you see it method using the prefixes. You only have one iodine, and remember, mono for one should only be stated for the second nonmetal. So this one we can get away with by just saying iodine. Now there's three chlorines. Three was tri, and we kind of did a tri chloride over here, so it would be the same thing. So this would be iodine tri chloride. It was chlorine, but the IDE comes into play here. So this would be iodine trichloride, and that's it. And there you go. This one is done. What do you guys think? Hopefully the naming is getting a little better. Just remember these rules. Practice, practice, practice. If you want more practice, there's always number 23. And I think there's up until 30. So we got tons of problems. So if you want to stick around, and if you're on the playlist and you want more practice, I'll see you guys in the next question in about five seconds. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to like the, the video, like the video. It's up to you guys. Thanks so much.
See you guys in a few seconds. Bye-bye.